a look at if, 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 then sentences. And I like these, I like them a lot. They are very quirky and different. They're a bit like a mini story, and we're going to be thinking about having them at the start of our story when we get to do our creative writing at the end of the week, and also have them at the end of our story. Why do I like them? Not only are they quirky, they're going to link in with our topic. Old Winston Churchill loved to use a Churchillian triplet. He liked to use three examples, sometimes he'd do it as a sentence, sometimes he'd do it as a clause. As you can see here, we've got if all do their duty, if nothing is neglected, if the best arrangements are made, we shall prove ourselves. Other example, victory at all costs, victory in spite of all terror, Victory, however long and hard the road may be, for without victory there is no survival. So let's have a look at how we will write our own if, 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 then sentences. So we're thinking about using them at the start, and the nice thing about using them as a start is they're a really good hook. You're telling your reader what is actually going to happen, but that's actually really intriguing. The reader's kind of going, oh, how's that going to happen? How's it going to link? What's going to happen? And we can also use it as a flashback. We can talk about, this is what happens, and then zhizhing, we're putting our character back, telling what's happened, and then at the end of the story, boop, they're gonna pop back to more recent times. So you're kind of putting them into a little time machine, zhup, they'll go back and say, this is what happened, and then zhup, they'll come back to nowadays, although that probably will be at the end of the war. So, I've written a couple of examples. I'm going to probably read the second example that I've got here. I had a little change around, and you're going to find this, they need quite a bit of editing, it takes a bit of time to get your head around it, just because you're writing it, it's almost like a little story in itself, because you're having to explain what's going to happen. So I was thinking of a house being bombed, um, so if the moon had not shone that night, if the blackout curtains hadn't flapped, if the house had stood firmer, then his life would not have been shattered. And then we can go straight into our character, starting to tell his story. Um, technical thing to notice, we've got three ifs, and then we go to a then, kind of is in the name of this type of sentence. We have commas, we have a comma at the end of this clause. We're gonna have a comma, and then we'll go into the next one, and then we'll have a comma and then we'll have a comma, and then off we go with them, and we'll just have a full stop at the end of that. So, we're gonna use these, hopefully, at the start of our creative right, and then we could experiment with them end as well, because they can summarize what has happened. Now, I didn't like this example, but I prefer the second one again. If I hadn't been evacuated to the countryside, if I hadn't spotted the lights on during the night, if I hadn't followed my instincts, then the spies would never have been caught. And it's going to summarise what's happened in the story and always just kind of draw a line under it. Be kind of a concluding paragraph, which we would do if it was like non-fiction and we'd be a bit lot clearer. But actually in our story, we're kind of just neatly bringing it to an end, tying all the loose ends kind of things. It's quite a, a sophisticated way to develop our story writing. Okay, good luck.